Hey, what's up guys? Bitcoin dropped yet again. Many investors worry that worst is yet to come when central bank will start increasing interest rates. In this video, I will explain how Bitcoin is likely to perform in a high interest rate environment. Guys, here's how to avoid paying capital gain tax for Americans. Number 1. Give up your citizenship. Number 2. Move to Puerto Rico. Number 3. Open crypto IRA account. I prefer the third option. That's why we partner with iTrust Capital. iTrust Capital is a retirement account provider that gives you an opportunity to invest in cryptocurrencies, physical gold and silver. They have a wide range of cryptos such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, Chainlink, Avalanche and many more. This platform not only gives you tax-free trades, but also 24-7 trading access with no set of fees nor monthly fees. Users simply love iTrust Capital. There are over 100k accounts created with more than 1800 plus 5 stars reviews. It has been voted number one crypto IRA platform in America. What about security? You don't have to. This platform uses military grade secure storage partnered with Coinbase and Fireblock. If you do not want to pay taxes when crypto skyrocket, sign up for iTrust Capital and receive $100 of Bitcoin with the link in the description box below. Ok guys, let's start with the Bitcoin market. As of the time this recording, Bitcoin is wiggling around $40,000 a coin. BTC currently at the bottom of this channel. It hit the support once again, dropping from $48,000 to this current $40,000 a coin in just 2 weeks. That would be 16% decline. This is the fourth time it dropped to this support level since the beginning of 2022. So far it rebounded 3 times. Now we shall see if there will be another bounce back again. Personally, I'm not so concerned about Bitcoin's future. Right now, a lot of retail and even professional investors are worrying because inflation is high and Federal Reserve promises 6 more interest rate hikes after the first one took place a few weeks ago. Theoretically, when interest rate increases, people should spend less and save more. This could potentially deflate asset prices and increase saving pile and slow down the inflation. In addition to that, central bank promises quantitative tightening which will pull more liquidity out of the circulation in the economy. We do not know if this is going to happen, at least this is what they want. So theoretically, if we will have deflation assets, Bitcoin is likely to take hit as well, yes? Well, let's examine the facts. Federal Reserve already increased Fed fund rates from 0% to between 25 and 50 basis points. This is very small bump on the way. If they will increase interest rates incrementally, we will probably hit somewhere between 1.5% and 2.5%. It will definitely not be higher than it was in 2019, which was at 2.5%. Let's zoom out a bit and take a look at the bigger picture. This chart represents Fed fund rates in the past 70 years since 1950s. Since 1950s to 1980s, we saw gradual increase in interest rates from the few basis points all the way till sub 20%. However, since 1980s, the rates won't steady decline. It hit 0% in 2010. Then, since 2015, we saw another small interest rate hike followed by another decline. Now, let's take a look how did the stock market perform during the past 70 years. This chart represents S&P 500 index fund which tracks 500 largest companies in the United States. From 1950s to 1980s when interest rates were increasing, S&P 500 still increased from 22 basis points to around 160. That would be around 8.5% annual compound rate from 1950s to 1980s, which is not bad. However, from 1980s, when the interest rates won a decline, the stock market increased from 160 basis points to this current 4390 basis points. That would be around 8.3% annual compound rate. So technically, stock market performed slightly even better when the interest rates were on the rise from 1950s to 1980s. So why am I telling you this? Well, first reason is because many investors believe that Bitcoin has a strong correlation to stock market. When stock market is up, Bitcoin is up even more, but when stock market is down, Bitcoin is down even more. The moral of the story is, even when Federal Reserve will increase interest rates, we should see a decent performing stock market and even better performance from Bitcoin. Another group of people believe that Bitcoin is a risk of asset similar to gold. Therefore, they like to compare Bitcoin to gold. We have here 70 years of history of gold's chart. It seems like interest rate had no effect on gold, especially prior to 1970s. 
This is because dollar was pegged to gold. In 1971, Nixon took off dollar out of the gold standard, and gold skyrocketed. In 1971, gold was trading at around $35 per ounce, and now it's near $2,000. Therefore, gold increased by around 8.5% annual compound rate for the past 51 years. Very similar to stock market. If Bitcoin is indeed digital gold, it will do better. In the end of the day, I do not see a terrible scenario for Bitcoin, especially when Federal Reserve will increase interest rates. Okay, let's shift the gear a bit and take a look at some Bitcoin news. Terra buys another $100 million worth of Bitcoin. They have been loading BTC recently. Terra's Bitcoin holdings are over $1.7 billion after another purchase of $100 million worth of BTC. Terra seems to be nowhere near concerned regarding the ongoing crypto dip. Instead, it topped out its Bitcoin reserve with additional purchase of $100 million worth of this asset. Earlier this year, Duke One, founder and CEO of Terra Farm Labs, revealed that the company's intention to introduce stablecoin, which will be backed by Bitcoin reserve worth in total of $10 billion instead of fiat currency. I think that would be the biggest Bitcoin reserve by any single company out there. It will surpass MicroStrategy by quite a bit. Speaking of MicroStrategy, Staler will buy more Bitcoin. Staler calls MicroStrategy's Bitcoin play tremendous success. MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor called his multi-billion dollar Bitcoin throne a tremendous success in driving shareholders' value. Adopting Bitcoin as a primary treasury asset set us apart from conventional competition and elevated our brand. We will continue vigorously pursued both strategies, he said. MicroStrategy spent almost $4 billion acquiring $130,000 Bitcoin for an average price of more than $30,000. 130k BTC at this price that would be around $5.2 billion. Terra is planning to have $10 billion worth of BTC as a reserve. It seems like it will surpass MicroStrategy and last sailor will raise another $5 billion to buy Bitcoin. Here is a cool chart that represents number of Bitcoin on crypto exchanges. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency exchanges continues to go lower and lower. During the corona crash in 2020, it was at 3.1 million BTC and now it is at 2.4 million. So it dropped by 20% in the past two years and it will continue to go lower, making Bitcoin more and more illiquid. Another interesting chart, it represents the supply last active one plus year ago in the form of rate of change in this blue line. At the same time, it's a great indication that gives us an idea where Bitcoin market is at any given moment. When the metric is in this green zone, it means that BTC is likely to hit the bottom and it will start to invert soon. However, when it reaches the red area, it may mean that BTC is about to hit the top. The rate of change hit that red area when BTC hit $64,000 back in 2021. Since then, we had another new all-time high, but soon after that, metric came crashing down and now it is in this green area. This metric was also in this green area when the price bottom in late 2018 at $3,200. It happened also in 2015 when BTC dropped to $200. And similar thing we saw in 2012 when BTC dropped to around 5 bucks. In all those scenarios, it was a great time to buy more Bitcoin. For me, currently, this is a great time to buy as well. Now, let's take a look at this quick video where Kevin O'Leary explains why institutions currently waiting on the sideline to invest in BTC, then he will explain what his crypto portfolio looks like. For all of these institutions that you say are just waiting for clarity, for them to get that clarity. The easiest way to do it would be to do what the Canadians did and simply allow the first American traded Bitcoin ETF, which could be purchased as a security into mandates that are already set up to purchase securities like shares because they don't have to buy Bitcoin, they don't have to set up a separate wallet, they could simply say, okay, here is a true ETF with the underlying actual Bitcoin, right. and we can simply allocate 50 basis points to a $100 billion mandate. We can buy the ETF. That would be the easiest path to take. My guess is they're not gonna allow that. There's, there's multiple applications for that ETF, just of had, which none have been granted. Just had Kathy Woods uh, one rejected very recently. Exactly. and so. It, it doesn't matter which one gets it's actually licensed because there'll be 10 more that will come immediately. But we're going to need an order from the regulator to allow 
institutions to be compliant when they buy Bitcoin itself. Can we therefore rule out Bitcoin going to zero? Bitcoin's never going to zero. That's a personal opinion. Not going to happen. There's enough people around the world that see it as a store of value, me included, that it is a it is a 5% weighting in my portfolio, just like gold is. Peter Schiff is going to be so upset when you hear that. <laughs> I, I, you know, but, he, but that, so I, Bitcoin I, I appreciate is never going Pit, to zero. Peter's opinion, and I listen to it. I actually do. He's one of the guys I listen to. I like to hear alternative ideas. I don't agree with him on Bitcoin, and he's, he's yet to be right. And so the, the whole key to this is diversification. I said 5% weighting. That's a full allocation into one asset, Bitcoin. But I also own Ethereum. I own Solana. I own Hashbar. I've got... Uh, Polygon just bought a, I bought a big piece of that private placement. I, I've got into um, Avalanche. I mean, there's so many different, it's all software. It's all software. And so if I'm buying Google and I'm buying Microsoft, why am I not buying these software ideas? And I am. But now I have the confidence in listening to the regulators that they're not going to make it illegal. So sounds that other than that, you're a year later, even more bullish than ever on Bitcoin. Yeah, no, you're right about that. And when we meet again here in 12 months, we'll find these innovations. What we're going to see, I think, is some policy, probably on stable coins. That is going to blow that sector wide open. All right. We will have to leave it on that very optimistic note. All right. Thank Good you so much. Good to see you as always. Thanks, Kevin. Take care. I agree with him that Bitcoin TF in the United States would be huge. It probably would be the biggest catalyst we saw in the Bitcoin market to this date. Kevin O'Leary acknowledges that he owns 5% of his portfolio in Bitcoin, but he also owns Ethereum and a bunch of other altcoins that personally I do not own. Let me know what you guys think about the interest rate and the Bitcoin performance. Will the interest rate crash the Bitcoin market or not? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.